Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to calibrate your glow shift uh, wideband sensor. Um, I told you in a previous video I showed you how to do it and I showed you where the bung was from underneath. I'm going to show you where it's from, where I put mine at. Uh, from the top, I'm going to try my best because it's going to be downstairs in the garage so it's a little dark. Uh, know that it, they do recommend, glow shift recommends it's at minimum 6 inches downstream of your actual exhaust outlet and it's maximum I think 36 inches downstream and it still has to be in front. It's supposed to be in front of the catalytic converter because if it's after it, obviously the catalytic converter is gonna do things to it and make it different. Um, getting right into it, it does come with a Bosch 4.9 LSU sensor, I believe. Um, this is what it looks like. I did actually talk to a technician about uh, whether they had anti-seize on it already because they do recommend you put it on so you can remove it. Uh, they said that it does, I can clearly see it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, like this nickel looking liquid that's on it is uh, anti-seize. So they put this cap on it so it's not removed. So it does already come with it. If you want to put a little more on it, you can, but I would recommend you put it so you can put it on so you can get it off in the future. Um, it's supposed to be like the latest sensor they have. It's I think other people have like a 4.5 or something. So uh, this is what the sensor actually looks like. I already showed you guys in a previous video that I had wired it. Um, so I'm just going to connect that. Uh, go downstairs, connect it, and then show you how to calibrate it. Um, the warm-up process and how to set your low setting. I believe you want your low. I'm going to put my low setting, if I'm not mistaken, to rich. So... Um, a low considered uh, if it's high if your air fuel ratio is high it's considered lean uh so like 15.7 parts air to one part of fuel if it's low which is like one part of fuel to 13.9 parts of uh, air it's considered rich so your low setting definitely would be on the richer side which i'll go over how to set that on this gauge um there's the option to set it if you want it to like beep when it um when it hits that low point that you set and all that stuff it does give recommendations on the instructions on what is considered uh, optimal uh, like air fuel ratios, what's too rich and what's too lean. So uh, I'll go over that as best as I can down there, but uh, again, it'll be a little dark. So I'm gonna try to have a light just to show you this gauge and uh, we'll go over it as best as I could. So I'll see you in the garage. All right guys, so downstairs in the garage, I connected my harness to my sensor, which is right here. I took the cap off that way, it's open to air. And if you could see down there, I put the light, um, that hole right there, all the way down here, is where my is my um where I'm gonna be putting in the sensor. It had a cap on it, it just took off. Um just so I don't have a hole in my exhaust, so I took it off. So let's calibrate. I'm gonna come inside the car without hitting my fiance's car. Alright. So you wanna take your key and you wanna turn the car to accessory. So do not turn the car on. You just want power to the gauge. And then you want to let the gauge warm up for 30 seconds. And I'll come back in 30 seconds. And these, that, that peak and red light will flash while it's warming up. And then when those are done flashing, it means it's done warming up. Again, you have to warm up the sensor every time before you start the car. And you can only calibrate it out of, like, you, you calibrate it in air open to air not in the exhaust pipe because there's obviously leftover like gases and stuff i might read so you calibrate it in air but you have to wait for this to warm up before you calibrate it so after 30 seconds it's going to look like that you're going to come down to your actual box that you have back here and there's going to be a little button on it um and you're going to press it it's all at the top hold on all right if you come to the actual glow shift gauge there is a button at the top center um you see that little button right up top, right to the left of the G? You're gonna press that and hold it for five to seven seconds after the 30 seconds of the sensor warming up with just the power on. So when it's calibrated, when it, I guess when it's calibrated or when it's calibrating, it goes back to the that that needle will drop to the bottom. I hope you saw that, and then it'll do that thing. And then I guess when it's done calibrating, it'll go back to twenty. 
so now it's done calibrating. So it almost looks the same as when it warms up. Um, that's like the same thing as when the sensor warms up. So every time you turn on the car, like I said, the sensor will warm up for 30 seconds. It'll blink, and then when it's done and it comes all the way to 20, that means it's done warming up. So it's almost the same thing when you press the calibrate button on the box, is it just comes back, it'll do its calibration, and it'll go back. Um, I, I asked the technician that I was talking to if every morning technically it calibrates itself inside the exhaust, and they were saying that, he was saying that you have to do like uh, open it to air, and I understand that, but I was like, but in general, after you do it, after you open it to air, and you calibrate it that one time, whenever you do your calibration schedule, uh, and you put it back in the exhaust as a calibrated stuff in the morning and he kind of said no nope. That's how you calibrate it button down there five to seven seconds. It'll drop back down Make sure you calibrate it to air. It'll come back So now I'm gonna screw it in screw in the bung or the sensor into the bung and then I'm gonna show you what happens when I turn on the car and what it's reading All right, so I got the sensor in you can see it down there. It's the second one right there right underneath the blue um, and then I took the excess wire and I just kind of zip tied it to this pack um, I made sure that it is completely out of the way so you can't it's not uh, touching any moving parts so I'm gonna take this stuff off the engine all right guys so back in the car we're gonna go ahead and turn it on we're gonna let it warm up for its cycle that it needs to do these remember the peak and the red will flash until it's uh, warmed can't take up to 30 seconds all right so then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on I find that it's doing it again every time I turn on the car it redoes its whole thing because I, I guess it loses power for a little bit the sensor is still warm and it which is the point and then when it when I shut off the car, or I turn it on, it loses power for a little bit and then it goes back. Um, if you could see, I'm sitting right between, right out about what they would call stoic, which is about 14.7. I'm right between 14 and uh, 15. Um, for normal AFR, I believe for their fuel ratios, they're saying that rich is 10 to 12.9, optimal is 13 to 7.9, and then lean is 18 to 20. So I'm sitting right where I would want to be. If I give it a little bit of gas, I give it a little it jumps up and down but the gauge is working uh which is the point um and that's i'm super stoked about it so uh you might when you do turn on the car right right away from like a cold start you might get um maybe a leaner number and that's okay because the car is just like starting up in the morning and doing what it's got to do so now that you guys see the gauge is working looks good um you know that gauge works i already went over the water temp gauge it has to be at 180 the car has to be at 180 which it probably isn't at yet or it's probably just that maybe let's see what it's at yeah it's at 180 so that temperature gauge should start going up any second um, but anyways that's that's what this looks like the uh, air fuel ratio that's how you calibrate it uh, let the sensor warm up where I installed mine on the 2012 Camaro V6 next I'm gonna show you how to uh, set your low setting on this gauge all right guys to set your low warning you're gonna want to you have two buttons you have color I don't know if you could see that you have color and then you have set. So you're gonna hold set for five seconds. And then this light should flash and your needle should flash. But if you don't touch anything for five seconds, it'll go back. So you have to hold it again. And then If you press color, it'll move it up. And if you press set and you hold it, it'll move it down in increments. So just to see if it works, I'm gonna set it to 15. And then I'm gonna let it sit there and it'll save. All right, we're gonna try and turn on the car now.
So you see how that light's flashing? That light's flashing because that's that's the low warning. So that'll flash letting you know that it's at that low warning. You notice how if it goes past 15, it stops flashing. It goes up to 15, stops, and then it comes back down. So there you go, that's how you set your low warning on the uh, Glowshift Wideband. Then um, if you wanna set the, there's also a high warning. If you wanna set the high warning, it'd be the same thing. So you, instead of hitting set, you'd hold color for five seconds. And then, yeah, it's already at 18, which is exactly where I would want mine. So I'll just let it sit there and it goes back. So that's how you would set the high warning. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. That's gonna be the end of this video. Um, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Sorry it took so long, or if it seemed like a little finicky, I'm just trying to make sure everything's done right. Um, one of the hardest, harder mods I've done just because of the wiring and the pain in the ass with the bung and everything like that, but definitely worth it. I love the gauges, I love that they both work, and I just, I'm just, I, like I said, since I was a kid, I've always been like a, a fanatic of the uh, pillar pod gauges. So again, thank you so much. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't want to miss future content, and I will see you guys for the next mod. Bye.